hey everyone welcome to this video and I am going to talk about Amazon PPC audit tips for 2022 so before we dive in my name is Sean Smith from PPC AMS accelerator.com and do me a quick favor hit the like button really helps with my uh, with my YouTube videos with getting visibility in the algorithm all right let's hop on in so Ali Kolachi asks, he left a comment in the in one of my YouTube videos, in the YouTube video that I posted yesterday, and he says, thanks for helping the community. I had a question about auditing the PPC account. We get a new account, and how can we answer the following questions to the client? How much PPC sales can we increase? How much profitability can we bring to the account? How much time it take to reach these sales? How to know if there's space for op optimization to the campaigns? Should the client be charged based on hourly, based on the revenue we bring to the, his side, his account, and everything that is more of management and auditing side of PPC process? So um, I went ahead and just copied and pasted it here just so I can take notes. But honestly, you know, that, you know, that'd be a two hour video. For me to be able to fully answer these from a practical perspective, you know, I'd have to go in you know, create a search term report. And, and so I'm just going to give tips on this one. I'm not going to go in and do like, you know, step by step on everything, but I think it'll be useful just because, um, you know, these are things that we've seen over the years that people need to do if you want to sign clients and get them good results. So for the first question, how much PPC sales can we increase? Well, that requires an Amazon PPC forecasting mechanism. So that means that you need something that can pull historical data to figure out what the future might look like. And we have that in our training program. So in my Amazon PPC program and mastermind, we have a step-by-step -step auditing process on how to, you know, we use the search term report. I'm sure a lot of people use the search term report, but we find that historical data and then we figure out, hey, which search terms are we currently not bidding on that we could be bidding on? So that means we're not looking for duplicates. We're not looking for situations where the search term and the keyword is the same, right? Because that doesn't really bring additional sales. In my opinion, it will bring additional sales, but they're duplicate sales. A better way to do is to find, um, let me move this down a little bit so I have room for the notes, is to find, hey, um, we found out of you know 500 keywords, we found that 100 search terms from these 500 keywords were currently not bidding on at the moment. And if we bid on them, and you can find out in the search term report how much revenue those search terms have generated over that 60 days. So you can use that number to forecast what could potentially be made in the future. And what I recommend doing, you got to use a deduplication process to find those search terms that are not equivalent to the keywords. And we teach that in my program where it's like, you know, and I'm even getting more granular where I'm uh, deduplicating by match type. So deduplicating the search terms from the keywords at the match type level. That way we have an even more granular data set of like, hey, you know, we can, we found X amount of search terms that generated this many in this match type. So that just gives us some insight into like what can we do. So how many PPC, how much PPC sales can we increase? Forecasting, use the search term report, find unique search terms, and then find out how much money those unique search terms have made in the past 60 days. And then you can say, hey, you know, this is what they made in the past 60 days. So this is what we could potentially get. Potentially, it's a forecast. It's not perfect in the future from this. But I would actually even decrease that number because you know you want to make sure that you be realistic and conservative with your numbers number two how much profitability can we bring to the account well that requires a benchmark so you need to find out what is current profitability look like what has profitability looked like for the past two months so you have to look at um, what profitability has been like for the past two months now that could be using ACOS or you could get that number from the the person's account and you can say hey you know what's your average profit margin for you know um, June for April April for May June you know what's your average profit margin and you know what's your target profit margin so um, 
that's what you need to look at. And so how much profitability can we bring to the account? That one's really difficult to, to measure. I'll be honest, that one's not my strongest skill set. AC, optimizing ACOS, optimizing tacos, PPC to organic sales ratio, I can do that pretty well. And those usually lead to better profit. So, you know, how much can you bring really depends on usually um, when it comes to profitability, it depends, man. This one's a hard one to answer, Ali. Um, but those are some kind of tips for that one. It depends on what the current state is, how much time it would take to reach these sales. So let's say you're looking at the 60 day search term report and you have a search term that generated $10,000 in sales in 60 days. So that's like roughly $5,000 per month. And I would even decrease it down to like maybe like 3000 just to be conservative. So you could say like, Hey, we think, you know, conservatively we could give 2,500 to $3,000 a month for this search term or for, and then you can, you know, extrapolate that out to multiple search terms, like add it all up. So the amount of search terms you find that are unique, add up the total sales and, um, figure out what that number is. And then I would decrease that by like 30% or something like that to be real conservative. That way you can under promise, right? You don't want to over promise and underperform. You want to under promise and overperform. How to know if there's space for optimizations in the campaigns that requires systems, optimization systems that you're already using. So for example, we have like cutting bleeder systems. We have like high a cost systems and we use those systems on accounts. So when you use an audit, you can take the bid optimization systems you're already using and just, uh, just not make changes, but, uh, but apply the filters to the account to figure out, Hey, we have, you know, $2,000 in bleeding keywords, right? So for example, eight clicks and no sales, you could find out how many keywords are out there that have eight clicks or more and no sales. And you can say, Hey, you have, um, you know, you know, a hundred keywords that are bleeding and this is how much that they've lost in the past two weeks. Um, so that's how we determine if there's space in the optimization. You can find out how many keywords have a high a cost as well. Like, Hey, you have uh, 20 keywords or 50 keywords or whatever the number is above your target ACOS. We could bring those down. So those are a couple ways that you can figure out where there's space for optimizations. Should the client be charged based on hourly based on the revenue we bring to his account. I mean, it really depends on where this person, Ali, where you're at in your journey. Um, if you're more of a beginner, I recommend doing a flat fee. So I wouldn't do hourly. I would just do a flat fee. Um, I wouldn't do it based on the revenue you can bring in. I think that taking a percentage of sales is more of an advanced strategy. So I would focus on like a flat fee, you know, a fair flat fee. I wouldn't do hourly. I wouldn't do based on the revenue. Just do a flat fee. You know, you get paid X amount per month. And everything that is more of management and auditing side than a PPC processing side. You know, I would say that ultimately like, you know, you want to do phone calls at least monthly, you know, for, for a client. Um, you want to send weekly reporting. I like to send Loom videos. You know, these are tools that you can use to make sure that you're communicating to the client the results that you're getting for them and they can see kind of what's going on. So I like to use Loom videos because it just communicates much more. All right, Ali, I hope that answers your question. I hope that helps you out. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, click the like button. And if you're interested in working with me, um, with, you know, me working with your PPC, um, head on over to ppcamsaccelerator.com forward slash schedule to book a call. I will also leave the link in the description below. All right.